Hi, in this video we will discuss four critical attributes of any software system for measuring and evaluating performance. These are also called the elites of any software system because of the terminologies. Uh, knowing this, this is actually not just a software engineer's duty uh, to know this, but in any organization or company, the senior leadership and all high stakeholders are aware of this. Uh, rather, I would say the engineers who are aware of these statistically grow much faster than software developers who don't know this. So it is very important that these are the things that you are aware of and these are things that you consider when you are doing any system design, either in your job or in any interviews. These are the kind of questions that you should be asking when there is a question for system design. So without any further delay, let's directly jump into it. The first one is availability of a system. Uh, what is availability? Availability is the percentage of time that the system is performing normally. Basically, how what is the percentage of the of your uptime? Uh, and the formula to calculate that is basically you calculate your total uptime of the system uh, divided by the total time of the system into 100. So that's your availability percentage. Uh, your total uptime can be fetched by total time minus the total downtime. So say if in a year you had three downtimes of 15 minutes, uh, then in that case your total availability was number of minutes in a year minus 15 minutes is your total uptime by number of minutes in a year into 100. That's your availability percentage. Now let's check how availability is calculated by taking some scenarios. Say we have a downtime of three days in a month, that is 72 hours roughly. 72 hours in a month, three days, that is 10% downtime. So that means your uptime is 90%, uh, right? So your availability is almost 90% uh, of the system. 90% that is also called one nine. Uh, so if you calculate it for a year, the total downtime will be 36.5 days because 90% is uh, of the time it is available. There are other calculation metrics also. Uh, systems are designed for 99% availability, 99.9% .9 availability. But another interesting thing that I wanted to discuss was 99.95%. Uh, that's also uh, several systems in the industry calculate 99.5% availability. That's also called three and a half nines. So if a system is available for 99.95% of the time, it basically means uh, that it is down for 4.38 hours in the year and 21.56 minutes in a month. That is still, uh, the downtime is still very high. If you consider if you are building a huge application which will have millions and millions of users, considering a 21 minute downtime, like almost like half an hour in a month is, is is quite a lot. Uh, mostly when high available systems are considered, uh, people do consider five nines and plus, that is 99.999% available, which is called five nines. So if it is not, if a system is 99.999% available, that basically means that the downtime was 5.26 minutes in an entire year, uh, which corresponds to 29, 25.9 seconds in a month which is which is okay it's a, it's a high available system anything anything any downtime below that is obviously good uh, these are also called the nines of availability uh, famously these are uh, whenever you talk about availability of a system people generally talk in terms of nines uh, if a system is doesn't have any nines so say if your system is 85% available or 80% uh, available so 20% like almost 2.4 months in a year if, a, if your system is down obviously that is not a system that you uh, will be wanting to build or design so it has to be highly available when you build a large application uh, which contains several microservices and workloads availability of each component matters uh, so uh, if you think of a huge application that you are building uh, you, you will obviously not be building a monolith system you will be building a microservices architecture system uh, which will in that kind of a system each component each microservice the availability of each microservice is very important uh, this is because 
the availability of the whole system will never be more than the least available component so say if a if you are building an application which has five microservices inside that if one microservice has an availability of 90 percent your entire application can never have an availability greater than 90 percent it will always be less than 90 percent uh, if a system is has poor availability uh, this basically means that the business uh, is uh, not operating normally uh, which directly results in potential revenue loss uh, so which is where uh, business leaders and stakeholders are highly interested in this metric in this attribute of a system so whenever you are designing do keep in mind availability of a system the next one is reliability reliability is the probability of a system to perform normally what is the probability of a system that your system is going to perform normally uh, the metric that we follow the formula there are a couple of them that can be attributed to a reliability uh, uh, calculation first one is the mean time between failures so if there is if in a year there are say five failures that happen which impacted the availability of your system uh, what is the mean time between those failures are those like two months apart three months apart what is the average time so which is basically calculated by uh, total uptime uh, uptime is obviously total time minus the total downtime by the number of failures so that is the mean time between failures and another formula to calculate that is mean time to repair so obviously if a system goes down you have to repair that means there is maintenance right so what is the time it is taking for you to bring the system back up is it taking you a week or two weeks to if there is a code bug or if there is some kind of an infrastructure problem some flood or anything that happened is it taking you a week or is it are you able to bring that back up within minutes so the faster maintenance time the faster recoverability yeah, the better it is so the mean time to repair is the total maintenance time across all the failures by divided by number of failures so that is the mean time to repair so mean time between failures and mean time to repair are the two formula that corresponds to reliability of a system uh, reliability and availability actually goes hand in hand uh, mathematically speaking the availability of a system can be treated as a function of its reliability in other words reliability can be considered as a subset of availability of a system the next one is durability of a system durability of a system means the resistance of a system to perform efficiently even under unexpected failure events uh, if you remember in our uh, college and in our graduation we must have read about acid properties of transactions and uh, uh, database systems so uh, the acid the d in that acid is durability durability is even more important for storage systems uh, because of the data loss potential one of the calculating factors for durability of a system which is used in the industry is called annualized failure rate uh, this is the formula that i have given is in hours so basically you have the total number of hours in a year by the mean time between failures divided by the mean time between failures that is basically going to give you the annualized failure rate which is one of the uh, formula that you use to calculate durability of a system like i mentioned the durability of storage systems are even more important one of the examples for is uh, amazon's simple storage service right simple storage service is an object store uh, is a managed service uh, capability provided by amazon web services aws uh, S3 famously has a durability of 99.9999999999% which means the 119 durability so this durability level corresponds to an average annual uh, expected loss of 0.0000000001% of objects <laughs> i i know that is a bit uh, long so how many zeros did i tell yeah so basically if we consider for example if you store say 10000 objects uh, with amazon s3 uh, you can average expect uh, to incur a loss of one object remember you have stored 10000 objects you can expect a loss of one object once every 10 million years that's the durability of of amazon s3 
and many storage systems are built for high durability because of the data loss that I mentioned. So durability is one of the very important factors of uh, attribute of system performance. And the last one is possibly in my opinion the most important which is scalability. You build applications to scale. You don't want to build any application from the day when you designed and built it to stay the same throughout. You don't want, you obviously want that application or that service or that system to be used by more and more users. So there should be growth, there should be more workloads. So it should be able to scale. So scalability basically is that it means the system's capacity to adapt to increase in workload. So whenever there is an increase in demand of your users, your uh, business, there will be a potential workload increase on the system and the system should be able to scale to manage that workload that that load now scalability of a system can be calculated via various factors uh, uh, and the the formula is not uh, very very simple it's uh, it's actually different factors calculate the different formula depending on whether you are building an application whether you are building an infrastructure service whether you are building a hardware that will be deployed somewhere so the scalability factor actually varies a lot so this is not a one size fits all kind of a model it always works based on what is the kind of application that you are building but for an application which say a, a service that is running an application that you want multiple and millions of users to use which is probably a website or an app or something like that no, that basically has usage and the formula for that basically is so say whenever you your system has run for the first year and you want to uh, plan for the capacity that is needed to scale your system for the next year so the capacity for the new time period so consider the time period here is a year the capacity for the new new year will be the capacity of the last year obviously the total capacity of the last year that was that this system handled that has to continue so that plus year on year average workload growth so say your system has been operating for five years and on average the workload or usage of the system has increased 15 percent so you should account for that 15 percent increase what is the average year on your workload growth so plus 15 percent of that plus 100 and y percent that y is variable depending on what your business need is that can be 10 percent 20 percent that can be 110 percent 120 percent but definitely more than 100 percent y is obviously anything between uh, 1 to 100 so 100 plus y percent which is more than 100 percent of top n peak workloads so you should also be scaling for peak usage so you your customers will have various levels of usage uh, starting from low level to medium level to high level and then there will be four or five times in a year when there will be peak maybe in a holiday season or a super bowl or a diwali or something like that there will be some peak and for those peak workloads also your system should be able to handle another interesting uh, as a topic is elasticity which also goes hand in hand with scalability so scalability is this is the capacity to adapt a system's capacity to adapt to increase in workload right but elasticity is the system's ability to acquire and release resources with change in demand scalability is increase in workload elasticity is increase and decrease so you are acquiring and releasing so if there is a peak at that point of time you want to acquire more resources maybe add more hardware or maybe provision more capacity add more storage or something like that so those are you are adding to sustain that peak traffic maybe the one week of diwali or something like that but then once the peak goes down at that point of time you don't want to keep those running because obviously provisioning a new hardware or taking a new storage are obviously costly right to be cost effective you have to know how to scale down also so which is where elasticity matters like your system should be able to easily scale up scale down based on the change in demands uh, a, a very famous uh, uh, offering in the market is also auto scaling where there are uh, provision services which basically take care of scaling up down scaling in and out 
uh, automatically based on usage. So you manually don't have to handle that. Uh, they will handle that for you based on the usage. And many of the cloud providers or managed infrastructure providers actually have these capabilities. So elasticity is that is a function of scalability itself. Now, one quick thing before we close off is how do we achieve uh, these? Like, uh, obviously, there is no blueprint to achieving these, but uh, there are certain guidelines that every system or every software engineer should follow or any team should follow, I believe. Uh, the first thing is uh, your system should be designed without any single point of failure. So uh, if one component failing results in the entire application brownout, then that should be avoided. So you should be designing your system uh, in a way where one small part in the system impact should not uh, entirely impact the availability of the entire system. So that is one of the blueprints. Uh, adding redundancy at every, every layer of the system, uh, primarily at the data layer is key. So plan for fallback mechanisms, plan for add more workloads, like what happens if one server goes down, the traffic should still be able to be handled by the other server. From a customer's perspective, they are not impacted. So redundancy at every layer is important. Uh, data layer is, is very important because of the durability. You cannot afford a data loss. You should minimize as, mu as much as uh, possible. Uh, the third thing, and in my opinion, this is one of the most important things, is continuous monitoring and testing for these metrics like availability, scalability, durability, reliability. You have to continuously monitor. You have to continuously day after day, week after week. You have to continuously monitor and test. So that is unavoidable in my opinion. Uh, basically to understand the behavior patterns of the system. How is the system behaving? And once you know the patterns, then you will be able to design for optimization strategies. So that is one of the most important ways to achieving uh, these high uh, system functionality and performance. Uh, fourth, obviously, I think every organization or every company will do, but if you are not uh, doing it, uh, planning and projections are important. Uh, all systems uh, should be designed with at least some ballpark estimation of traffic, load, usage, and so on, right? Uh, you cannot build, remember, there is no 100% accurate system. Uh, you cannot design a system which is 100% accurate. That is simply a myth so what we should do is we should start small and incrementally improve by doing all these things and then tune and accordingly optimize to get more with less to be able to cater to customer demands as and when load increases to be highly available highly resilient to with high elasticity you should be able to acquire release as fast as possible uh, your downtime should be as minimized. Uh, if you start with say 99.9% uh, .9 availability, how can you go to 99.99% availability? Can you go to 99.95% availability? Uh, so those are, and those will always happen with m m understanding more system behavior patterns. What are the points of failures? Where is it, if it has failed five times and out of those four times has failed in one component, is there a code bug? Is there something that we can do to optimize? So those are some of the strategies uh, I believe uh, is useful for uh, achieving high system performance and any system design interview or if you are designing a system in your job, at least there are multiple other uh, uh, abilities of a system also, but these are the four key attributes that, that cannot be avoided in my opinion. Uh, so hopefully this was useful. Uh, I have discussed in more depth, uh, like when I spoke about cloud and different kinds of architecture, I have discussed at a high level, uh, different types of architectures like monolithic, service-oriented architectures and uh, like serverless architectures in a separate video. Do watch those out and uh, thanks for watching.